chain cleaning starts down here with the sprocket you see a section of it cleaned what you need to do this is my deluxe wood chisel with a split handle what is important about this chisel is that it be that flat on this side with no burr edges on it so it doesn't scratch the surface preferably what I do with it is kind of straightforward I just need to change my hands but come here there we go and I take off the caked on uh, dirt from there and from there with this chisel because spraying it with chemicals and spending money on chemicals is one thing yes of course there's going to be a chain cleaner either this kind or any kind of a kind that you find in your local motorcycle store but you're gonna to have to remove this stuff from the sprocket that's also causing friction I know it's not the chain but it is interfering with the chain and the chains silent operation there's also dirt particles embedded in this one like it or not so it's not just dirt it's just it's the uh, chain wax that you used last time and the previous time and the one before being saturated here with with the dirt that just flies about the wheel here okay so that's step one you need to make this one clean here and also repeat the procedure from the other side of the sprocket cleaning the chain continues from this side of the wheel and this side of the sprocket oopsie nothing fancy just scraping off the contaminated dirty uh, chain wax that gets over sprayed and spread over onto this side and then adjust the wheel and keep removing the keep removing the dirty old chain wax from the sprocket yeah, that, that's how it goes just to give it a few minutes it's not a glamorous job that, that's how cleaning starts and yes you guessed it right chain cleaning continues here especially around the muck the chain is in contact with as it's as you can see there's always a blob of grease that the chain is bulldozing around and you can see parts of this with the dirt embedded around here and that's coming from here together with the stones and whatever else is in here that all has to be cleaned up together with the side wall of the sprocket just this one is rubber so don't cut into the rubber for this one the screwdriver is better there I cleaned up the edges of the sprocket here and it's not possible to do it from the other side I cleaned up the deposits from the swing arm uh, pivot point there and also from the from this rubber uh, channel here around which or over which the chain slides there you can see the track here being free of how do I do this there here free of grit grit not grit grit and dirt and that's how it looks like and I also cleaned up here I'm just waiting for some good light nah, it's getting dark yeah, I cleaned up this part of this mesh that's protecting the hose that's going into the water pump don't cut into your hose with a screwdriver or a chisel you're gonna be the sore loser but you can see that I cleaned up there with the chisel carefully going around there the crud that's being thrown away from thrown off from the chain and gets deposited there and uh, I'm gonna get to this uh, chain guard here 
just you just won't believe what's what's on this you know it shouldn't take long but you know this is what I mean by cleanup it's it's thorough I'm not saying you have to do all of this but if you want to be thorough you know you pick and choose your level of commitment between speed shine and polish and uh, and uh, adjusting the chain because it's worn and worn and worn and then replacing it with another $150 chain so uh, how much time and energy you spend on cleaning the chain is, is, is up to you but uh, the amount of man hours or labor hours you put into chain cleaning I'm not saying it's it's gonna show up by not purchasing more and more chains more and more frequently but but there is a proportionality so a few minutes later this is how my chain guard looks like just cleaned with a flat tip chisel just like so and uh, now you can see that hey this one is actually made of metal and uh, is uh, there in front of the chain just in case the chain snaps uh, this piece of metal will stop it from cutting through the hoses well at least that's the theory and the oil filter that's there and uh, I'm gonna put some uh, chain cleaner on it because I want to make it look like just a little cleaner than this and again your level of commitment uh, how much time you spend on uh, this is entirely up to you so far I haven't touched the chain, but I spent 20 minutes on cleaning the sprockets and this chain guard. So, uh, what's worthwhile to you is uh, you decide. Alright, then here is a level of cleanliness I'm more comfortable with. In the process, I removed this bolt and I discovered that it's thread locked in there with red uh, thread lock. So. Uh, you may not want to take off this metal piece, but that's how the shape looks like when it's clean. It's tolerably clean on the inside and outside. I can live with that. Next one, the chain. Oh, I'll just mention it quickly that the chain guard has uh, four screws or bolts of two different lengths. These ones at the bottom are shorter because the plastic here has a uh, doesn't stick away that much from the engine and here the bolts are longer so these two are longer and these two are shorter just something to watch out for the the bolt is five millimeters longer for these upper locations I know the Sun is going down but about another 15 minutes later this is how the teeth and the sprocket looks like it's all clean. Ah, you can actually read the number on it. 43 teeth on the wheel sprocket. So I like the tips of the clean tips of the teeth clean as well. So I guess I'll shoot the rest of the footage tomorrow. There you can see those clean teeth from this angle a lot better. There, all of them are clean. Both sides of the sprocket. And uh, another thing I did was I uh, took the engine sprocket cover off again because I ran the bike not too fast, city speed, the normal speed to warm up the chain a little bit and uh, with the remaining lubricant whatever is left in it and, uh, and also to uh, spin it so any remaining bigger chunks would fly off and kind of self-clean for five minutes you know I I didn't drive to uh, Kansas I just went five minutes around the block okay so what I'm working on now is I'm also cleaning some spots on the frame and uh, places where crud also deposits this one here across the frame underneath the chain here through this access hole as well because from the chain this crud just gets deposited there why do I clean it there excellent question 
I don't want anything around the chain from which the now clean chain can pick up dirt. Okay, that's why. Well, I also cleaned it here super clean. This rubber surface on the, this one here, the chain guide or uh, well, that piece of rubber protecting the frame actually. And that one down there, you can see it's all nice and clean. There, let me just, just a sec, let me get a good shot on that one. There, you can see this edge here. It's all nice and clean. I don't want the now clean chain become dirty again. And what I'm working on is the top edge of this upper part of this frame protector rubber thingy. You can see it's still dirty. What do yesterday? I somewhat cleaned the uh, track part, but not the one that's in contact with the chain. Look at the chain. It's still filthy. You can see this gritty material on it. All that has to go. The point in this cleaning is that wear happens underneath these rollers. Okay? And lubricant has to enter from the side of this, there, through that teensy bit of a gap there. That side and the same on the opposite side. If it's clogged with dirt and crud, it's not gonna get lubricated. If it's not gonna get lubricated, it's gonna wear. And like I said, that's $150 for this chain, plus two sprockets front and rear. So, I keep cleaning, I'll get you an update in a few minutes. Done with this upper swing arm guard here. That's how it looks when it's clean. There, along its entire length. You can kinda make it work with the chain, you know, you can pull it to this side and that side with two hands on it and you can clean around it and what's coming out of there is that kind of stuff and you can see this dirt and metal particle embedded just wait for the camera to focus there we go dirt and metal particle embedded wax so I don't want this to be messing up my nice clean chain so I, that's why I want to get rid of all of it and while I Ran, ran the engine and the uh, rear wheel and everything. Not only it warmed up the chain, but it also kind of somewhat, somewhat self-cleaned from you know major blobs of this stuff. So that was another five minutes. While I was cleaning the teeth on the sprocket, I discovered that the teeth show some wear. You can see from the side that there's a wear line somewhere around there on each and every sprocket tooth there that it's dished at here on this surface and the tooth profile is normal from then on towards the tip and uh, I'll try to get a little closer if I can somehow well, I really can't but that line of light that you see and it's breaking on it that's that's not coincidental that's also showing out where the teeth are pulling it's actually rotating this way engaging with the teeth oh, sorry the teeth are engaging with the chain rollers there and exert the pull force that way so that's why they are dished out on, uh, on this surface on this surface here, every single tooth to about that line. So, that's some wear that's uh, acceptable and uh, it's duly noted. Another area I cleaned up is the underside of this chain guard that needs, well, I just started cleaning up, okay? You can see what happens on it. It's uh, full of crud for most of its length. I just started at the fat end here. And uh, it, it's a good quality PVC, it twists and everything. It's got a, it's got a little uh, pop-in connector, like, oops, sorry, like this one. 
so you have to depress the middle of this one to disconnect it from there and then you can just clean it by twisting it around this one is thread locked in as I discovered so that's gonna be that's gonna have to be put back the same way and uh, I try to remove that one but it's not coming off without removing the foot bracket which is also thread locked in and I don't want to do all that and uh, because the shifter is also attached to it so I just leave that one there and just twist the piece around it'll work and there we have it pretty clean right what I used was this air filter cleaner well I know that that's not air filter but it says it cleans foam and fabric air filter will not harm the foam or glue if it doesn't harm the foam or glue which is made of some kind of rubber product it's not gonna harm this one or the rubber o-rings in the chain either because I ran out of the other chain cleaner so there's this one but for God's sake don't use a brake cleaner on your chain okay because the brake cleaner has a solvent in it strong harsh solvents so this will do so what I do next is uh, this you can see how the links look kind of see after a cleanup how about from this angle here sorry there that would be the clean side and that would be the to be done side what I do is I take this rag and I go between the links and I keep uh, clean the crud off the side plates from there or the, not the plates this the sides of the plates I try to get a good picture of this yeah okay there you can see that the side plate the sides of the plates here are dirty and that's how they look like when they're clean and I'm just run the rag in between so since this is my mega cleanup I do this the out, so outsides of the plates I'm not too concerned about because that's not where friction and that's not where rolling action is where the chain has to be clean is again these rollers the sides of those rollers crud free along the edges so here's the chain, just about as clean as it's gonna get now. It's still gritty. It's not. Uh, it's not as clean as it uh, could be if it was new or came out of a lab or something. But it's it's pretty good, I say. You see, it's still gritty here and there but it's clean where the rollers are it's gritty around the o-rings and uh, but that's not a problem because those are sealed pins and here what I'm trying to show you just give me a sec here I'm changing my hands Oops. I'm setting up the light there we go here you can see that the rollers spin freely on their own okay they're all gritty a little bit particularly the both the inner and the outer plates more so on the inner plates the outer surface the one that's not facing the roller so when I was going with the rag between each and every single uh, gap between the rollers so not link by link half link by half link I try to make it as clean as possible around the rollers and at the edge of the rollers so you can see they are spinning easily under their own um, power I say something like that so now I'm ready to put some lube on